Gino. Here we go again. Let's get the wheels turning, the ball rolling. How you been? Not bad. Not bad. bad. Good. Glad to be here I'm in paradise. Yeah. Yeah. Does it feel like that for you? Well, uh, it all depends what you're able to ignore and what you're able to appreciate. All right. <laughs> well, that's so. a good point. So we've got moving we're, parts here. We're making a living though, right? Is that all that counts? Well, uh, certainly uh, you got to make a living to survive. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, we need to take care of what's uh, enabling us to make a living. Your and brother sent me a text uh, about 20 minutes ago when he said that. Uh, that's You visit You're, with my brother. I'm going to take him and, for a drive around. You guys are... are uh, pretty opposite on what you well, think. Well, uh, we think a lot. Uh, you do? We think alike in a lot of ways. Okay. And, and we've been able to uh, set in what our differences ways? In what aside. Ways, in what ways do you think alike? I, I think people... Uh, I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> well, i got to take him for a drive around. He, he, well, you he, be the judge. Case. You be the judge after 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 you've uh, interviewed but he does, myself. He does not then. support this candidate right here that you have. And you've got it on your... your uh, and you support well, it. Uh, has, Fritz, that has that created any Fritz, pressure? You know, at first, I really wasn't thinking of who I was going to be supporting. Uh, I serve on Shab with Fritz, and uh, Fritz asked if he could put his sign there, and I allowed him to. Uh, I did not uh, foresee the repercussions that would happen personally in the family, so uh, it certainly brought out uh, a difference uh, that my brother and I have had, and you, you, if you get to interview him, I will. I suppose the differences will come out. I'd uh, hate for it to drive a wedge between us. I love my brother, so uh, uh, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. Town meeting. You want to your thoughts, Andy? Uh, I was. Uh, Kind of drained of energy from the night before, but uh, uh, I would have loved to have called Article Eight. And uh, just, for those who just, don't don't know what it is, explain it. Article Eight being uh, the uh, what it takes to run the town every year, the the operating budget, and which is at 81 million and some change, and. Uh, I'd like to congratulate them for keeping that budget uh, fairly the same since uh, two years ago I had called Article 8 to raise some awareness, but uh, after adding up other appropriations and adding them to the general budget of 81000 plus, we spent $114 million with very little discussion. Uh, now, enterprise funds, of course, are covered by money brought in, but still it's money we're spending. Right. We're taking in $84 million, we're spending $200 million. $200 million. I mean... Merry Christmas. Yeah. Well, do you think that, that we're spent, that's just too much? I mean, it's just too much? Do, don't we need to spend that kind of money to keep our town? I mean, it's a progressive town. People want to be here. People keep wanting to come here. And they people love want here. their services. And, and they and, want their services. And, and, and I don't blame them. Services covers a broad spectrum. Services uh, to some may mean a lot more than to others. Uh, so what would you... I would rather look at our services in a more conservative way uh, than to continue to throw money at uh, uh, repairing and catching up. I, I truly feel that development on the island has put pressures on our infrastructure and our infrastructure has not been able to keep up. And, and the pressures are seen with crumbling roads. I think we had a big wake-up call this winter with the sewer disaster. At this point, not a whole lot of information has come out with the forensic investigation into why. Uh, we see a lot of vacuum trucks around. Uh, Cleaning out the, the the sewer pipes. I think we're I, buying one, aren't we? 
I think we yeah decided, yeah we we, yeah. we do have uh, you know one already I believe uh, it's pretty busy moving sludge every day from the treatment plant to the landfill right uh, we could cover a lot of uh, we could drive around all day there's so many issues right. facing us right. uh, when you look at the landfill to me it's simply a disaster I was waiting uh, to go over the scale the other day and I saw the red orange uh, fluorescent effluent seeping out of the edge of the hill and and you know we looked at that for years and as when they stopped putting garbage in the landfill and grass grew over it you really you didn't see that anymore it was kind of naturally capped with vegetation and when we were ordered to mine the landfill i think all we've done is disturb a monster waiting to break its shell. Uh, okay. how, how can we remove toxic sludge, liquids, inks from from the landfill? It's all a it's a it, it's you a think big, it's not gonna, bag. They were able doesn't to, it have to get out of there so it doesn't seep? Don't we need to take it out before it really does start to seep? How do you take it out? It, well, I it, thought it, we were it's, lining it. Well, there's a line cell there, but yeah. the the that's a, a that's a newer addition to the landfill, which right. we filled with uh, mostly C and D construction demolition, and there was a picture on the front page of an Inky Mary years ago with uh, it showed cubes, cubed plastics burning in the landfill. The landfill caught fire, spontaneous combustion maybe, I'm not sure, but it was the line cell. As it said it, front page news, picture of it. What you see here are recycled plastics burning in the line cell. Well, if they're recycled and squared up in a cube, why are they in the cell? That's not recycling. And, and, and there's a lot going on behind that hill that uh, we're just simply not aware of.